This is a lesson about area, specifically about rectangles and parallelograms. And in class, we've been learning about area, and the meaning of the of area is the total number of square units needed to cover a two-dimensional surface. And two dimensions would be length. and width of a shape or surface or sometimes you might hear base which would be like the bottom times height how tall is it so let's get started with rectangles I have a square and basically all I need to know is how long is the base and how tall is it? Usually uh, I have kids start out with graph paper. And the reason for that, I just write, wrote down the base is 3, so it has a length of 3 at the bottom, and it has a height of 3. And the reason for that is you can visually see the squares inside the shape, and you can count them. So this square has an area of nine square units. So now I have a rectangle here. It has a height of three. It has a base, it looks like seven. And again, I can see it in the graph paper really well. And I can see that there's 21 squares in there. So the area is equal to 21 square units. And hopefully as students practice this, they're going to realize it's really just the base times the height for rectangles. So in this case, it was uh, 7 times 3 is 21. And for the square, it was just 3 times 3 is 9. I hope that the students will make that connection. Now, parallelograms are a little different. What you need to kind of visualize is that a parallelogram really is a rectangle that's kind of been pushed from the top and now it's kind of topsy-turvy. I don't know how else to say it. But you could visualize that this parallelogram could be that rectangle if you made a cut right here with some scissors. So I took some scissors and I cut that and if I could move it over here and glue it or tape it over here, I'd have a rectangle. And that's an important concept. So what you need to know is how long's the base? Two, three, four. The base is equal to four. And how tall is it? The height. Straight up and down, just like a rectangle. And the height is equal to three. So now it just becomes uh, a problem just like a rectangle. It's 4 times 3. So the area would be 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So the area is equal to 12 square units. Now we'll try this longer, skinnier one over here in the lower right-hand corner. So again, what I try to have kids do is do this on graph paper first. Visualize it as a rectangle, if you can, without changing any of the dimensions. So notice on the bottom, I kept that length of the base intact. And I'm going to pretend I'm taking some scissors, and I'm just cutting this piece off. 
moving it over here. And I'm going to reattach it over here. And now I have a rectangle. Notice that the base hasn't changed its dimension at all. So what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The base is equal to seven. And has a height has a height of two. So now it's just a problem that's seven times two. That's just fourteen. So the area is equal to fourteen square units. I'm gonna not have enough room to write that part. But the area of that parallelogram is 14 square units. And I'm gonna have uh, students work backwards on this. So draw a parallelogram that is not a rectangle with an area of 18 square units. We're practicing this in class and honestly I'd first draw a rectangle that has an area of 18 square units and then just change it so it's a parallelogram. So let's see, 3 times 6 would be 18. So I first start out just highlighting 3 times 6. And that's, that's 18. So now I just have to kind of tilt it to make it a parallelogram. So I'll start here and draw 6 and end right there. And now I just need it, it to be a little tilted on the top. So maybe I will put a dot here and then do that. And then the top piece has to be 6 as well. So 1, 2, 3, four, five, six. Now I just kind of close it. So the height is three. The base is equal to six. So that parallelogram right there has an area of 18 square units. And then just to kind of clean things up, I would erase what I started with just so it's easier to see. I don't know if you can understand what I'm talking about there or not. And that might be the best way to do it, especially on graph paper. I highly encourage you guys to use graph paper. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you got any questions, please ask.